For all their talk of deja vu and friendship bringing them together in Alaska year after year to fly, explore, and escape their busy lives, to drink beer and entertain their odd proclivity for slicing cheese. This is no sequel to that film. In 2018, the boys failed to mount an attempt for anything worthy of the lens. But with the help of a new friend, pursuit of a story just as obscure and pointless as Deja Vu unfolds. At the time, I felt like we were posers. We didn't accomplish anything, but a real poser would not have even tried. Mm -hmm. Truly, this is a tale about nothing. We don't have a story. That's the point of the story. We had barely a mission. <laughs> we, yeah. we totally failed at the mission. We came home. We slept in some nice warm beds in a, a house in Wasilla. We, we are posers. Yeah, whatever, I got brisket. <laughs> Dudes get together and eat beef. That's what we do. <laughs> Where are we gonna go? We got a day, we got a night, let's go do something. And I, I looked all over and trying to figure out what like little airstrip to go to. And we finally settled on Eight Mile because it's got some history in Alaska and it's close and it's in Squintna and whatnot. And So whereabouts is that? It's close in, so if the Alaska Range kind of arcs around, you're kind of in the sweet spot right before you head towards any of the passes. The weather forecast was not good. Um, <laughs> we knew the days leading up that the, the weather was not going to be good. It was going to be a total gamble, but we went for it anyway. Yep, yeah, that's, that's what you do when you fly here. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works in Alaska. You're like, yeah, the weather doesn't look that great, but you never know till you get there. It was a fool's errand. So we get in the air and we start heading towards the uh, eight mile and uh, you know, it starts snowing, right? You know, that's the thing you want to see when you're flying the eight mile or some remote strip snow. 
that's the point where we had that conversation. You know, the two pilots in the aircraft, like, I'm a pilot, you're a pilot. You know, what are your minimums? What are my minimums? Uh, you know, at what point do you think we should turn around? <laughs> If we weren't like two, three miles from, from eight mile, I would have turned around because it's like, there's no point in going further. But we were we were right there. So we might as well look at it, you know? The the terrain out there is like, I mean, it's the it's the Squintin River Valley. So it's like super flat until you actually get to the Alaska range, right? It's, yeah, it's marshy tundra. It's, it's uh, little trees and rivers and swamps and yeah. Right, so there, I mean, there, there was no significant terrain. Really, all we were trying to do is just stay under that little scattered layer, mm -hmm. which was at about, what, 1,500 feet or so? Something like that. It wasn't yeah. high. We finally, like, we make visual contact with the, with the eight-mile strip, and we set up for, like, a long final. Right. And we could tell from a long ways out. It's white. If I've ever been taught anything about flying around snow, it's you never land with wheels on snow that you're not absolutely certain of the depth. Yeah, exactly. And if you have skis, you still think about it. We decided we would just kind of play it safe and head back, and so we turn around and we're we're heading basically straight east. We got lots of gas on board, you know, tons of gas, right? Nothing to do. <laughs> right. No real time constraints. No, and we, we marked out the whole afternoon for it and we're trying to figure it out, and so we decide, eh, let's just go ahead and stop in Willow, right? We decided to land at Willow um, because it's just kind of an out of the way dirt strip, but there's actually a lot of activity there at the airport, right? And that's where you learned to fly. That's right. Years and years and years ago, I bought a 150 and uh, I flew it up to Willow and this old guy named Walt like taught me to fly out of Willow. And it's great because it's uh, you know five miles long and two miles wide and it's gravel. So it's a great place to really learn how to fly a tail dragger. Going around, Steve? No, I'll go ahead and stop here. We'll sit down. All right, Willow traffic, 17 Alpha, mile and a half final, runway 31, straight in.
suddenly this little spot at Willow turned into kind of a impromptu Valdez stole competition practice session. Yeah, yeah, so this guy shows up in this 172 and like rolled right out there onto the runway and started inching a line across and he's like, yeah, we're gonna practice. Unfortunately, the boys were too impaired by their excitement to capture the spectacle. There was nothing else to do, and if we were gonna fly, like yeah. this was gonna be it, so. The cheese and beer were still in the aircraft. So it was great. Kyle was doing laps. Uh, you were doing laps. Uh -huh. I was doing some laps. The Beaver was doing laps. Uh -huh. The Super Cub and the 172 were doing laps. Everyone was kind of practicing. We went on an adventure, you know, and if it ended up in Willow, then, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Um, and we got some time together and we got to uh, experience Alaska, you know, the way that um, Alaska is in May sometimes. I think that the spirit of backcountry flying is to go somewhere that you have never been before. And if it doesn't work out, so be it. I mean, that's how adventures go. Once again, it's been made clear that adventure is not necessarily found in success, but rather the salvage of a failure. These boys have done nothing worthy of recorded history, let alone an entry in their own diaries. But their ability to distort reality, to craft a massive delusion of grandeur, is the feat worthy of accolade. So what does it mean to be a poser when you're giving an interview about backcountry flying? Is it more poserish to talk about <laughs> to talk about what it's like to be a poser? We didn't have to sleep in the same tent together? That's right. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> It's much better than flipping your airplane in the snow and then having to bivouac out in the middle of nowhere. True that. You know, one of the most beautiful places to fly in Alaska is uh, Lake Clark Pass. And you don't even need to land there. Why? Because the glaciers that carve the pass 
are still in the pass. Well, we should have gone there. 